This is May 31st, last day of May, 1984. We're at Henry's place, right? At the uh, hospital. No, this isn't the hospital. Well, it's Ridgewood Lodge. It's connected with the hospital. Yeah, you're in room three of the Ridgewood Condominium. Yeah. Condominium, right? Yeah. You were going to tell me uh, about uh, a bear that you knew? Yeah, I shot a bear at 40, 3240. Yeah. Rifle. Yeah. That's the old kind that uh, the bullets interchanged between the pistol and the rifles? Or do you know? No. No, it wasn't? Oh. And uh, I pulled for his ear. He was up a tree ways and I pulled for his ear. Yeah, yeah. And he dropped down. Uh huh. And I thought, uh, I got you. And that old boy walked over there closer to him. And uh, he got up and I had to shoot him again. Yeah. But when I first shot him, it went in the ear, and over the skull, and out of the other ear. Just ricocheted around inside. Mm -hmm. Never never hurt his brain? No. Isn't that something? Well, he's got a darn thick skull. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I imagine it gave him a bit of a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were giving me some advice about my garden a while back there. And you think I'll get any crops this year? You I can. planted corn. You did? Yeah, do you think I'll get any corn in the fall? Well, it all depends if it freezes or not. No. Yeah, yeah. If it freezes, well, then you can goodbye. kiss goodbye. Kiss my crop of corn goodbye. <laughs> So, and the spuds are going to take three weeks before they come up. Mm -hmm. No matter what you Depends do. Depends how deep you put them. Yeah, yeah. Should you plant them deep? Oh, very deep about that deep. That's all? Yeah. yeah. That's about six inches. Huh? Yeah. That's about all. I had a fellow show me how to plant spuds one time. He was from West Germany. He was uh, over here visiting me. And he made... He made rows of soil, and he pushed them in the side. He pushed the potato in the side of the row, you know, in the little yeah. hills. And shoved it right inside. They really grew well. Well, yes, he wouldn't have to do a lot of hilling and mm -hmm. like it has. Yeah, they really grew well. Yes. Well, you raised a few ton of potatoes out your way there, huh? Yeah. At uh, Friend Lake. Yeah. And one year, I uh, I may have told you this, but uh, an early frost come, froze the ground, and I couldn't take the turnips up. Yeah. The last thing I left in. Yeah. And uh, so I go to heck with them. The next spring, the ground saw I was full of flood and took them in and tried them. And, uh, I don't know why, but old Billy Garrison come along and he had some of these guys, he said, these are the best turnips I've had. So he says, you got any more? And yes, I said, you've got a couple of ton of them there. Because uh -huh. he says, I can sell them for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, he went to the uh, road camp, he was building the Hope Princeton Road at the time. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so uh, 72 sacks of turnips. Yeah. At a good price? Yeah. They were good turnips, huh? Yeah. Fresh at the beginning of the year. People don't get those fresh vegetables like that usually, right? No. And that would make them special. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had a bunch of turnips down here and didn't know what to do with them. All the turnips we wanted. And I threw a bunch of them out. And the uh, neighbor come along and asked him, I said, you want to take in the spuds home for you, uh, turn them home for your pigs? So he took them home and he threw them out in the snow mm -hmm. and started digging them up in after a few days. And 
Mm -hmm. the best turnip she ever had. He ate them too, huh? Yeah. 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 They say turnips, if they get frosted a bit, are good. Mm -hmm. That makes them best, they say. Yeah. Yeah. On the seed packages, it says too. Yeah. Harvest after the first couple of frosts, it says. Leave them mm -hmm. in the ground until they've been frosted a couple of times. Mm -hmm. No, you see you get ten or so like that. Eight inches across. Yeah. Oh, oh. yes, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Huh. Did you ever raise pumpkins or squash? No. They frost out too easy. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right. No, as I said, I told you once we had frost on the first of July one time. Yeah, yeah. That would really ruin it. You lost the whole year's crop, huh? Yeah. What'd you do then? Order a lot of stuff from Woodward's? No, I replanted it. Did you get anything? Oh, yes. Yeah? You got a crop? Yeah. What would you grow on the 1st of July? What would you plant? Oh, anything. Potatoes again, all right? Potatoes, yeah. 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 Hey, do you believe, Henry, that the plants know that they've got to speed up to get their seeds? Like, I've seen this with peas, you know? When the, when the frosts are coming thick and fast in the, in the fall, you'll find pea pods and only two of the peas will develop. But they'll be nice and big and the other ones will be, you know, yeah. left ungrown, undeveloped. Yeah. It's almost like that pea plant knew that it only had so much time so it put all its energy into the two peas so mm -hmm. that there'd be some for next year. So uncanny, I think plants come, can adjust sometimes like that. Well, I think so. Yeah. Now, how do the birds tell? Well, the spring of the year now. How do they know through down south that it's springtime up here? They can't read or listen to the TV. No. no. Yeah. Yeah. Instinct. Instinct. Yeah. Right. And geese, I've heard a couple of flocks of geese going over. Mm -hmm. What's the best example of instinct that you know of, that you've heard of or seen around your ranch or something? Of instinct among far farm animals? Have you ever seen any examples of that? That's it, I paid the attention to them, I guess. Have you seen a uh, chicken raised ducks, for example? Oh, yes. You have? Chicken raised duck eggs? Yeah. What happens when the little old hen sees her brood head off to the river and dive in? She goes crazy, doesn't she? <laughs> no, she... Does she try to swim with them? No, she just walks along the edge of the water. Yeah? That must drive them crazy, because their instinct is that their little ones <laughs> yeah. are going to drown. <laughs> and the hen's standing there watching the babies, going right for the water. Last year, I watch it. What time have you got? Oh, uh, I'll go check. I'll go check. So you got plenty of time to lunch. It's 11:30 right now. I've been having fun working with this juniper. Boy, that's beautiful wood. Yeah. Well, I got some about half that thickness. These are just the reject pieces. I put them together in this little box here. Mm -hmm. So I have something to keep my recorder. You said you made some uh, coffee tables with juniper. Yeah. Did you ever use antlers for anything? Uh, like make the legs out of the table with antlers or anything like that? No. No? I know one table up there. And yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, where they make a juniper top and then they put antlers on the bottom yeah. of the leg. <coughs> but you've got to have a piece of plywood to lay your top on. You do, yeah. It's not strong enough otherwise, huh? No, well, if you, uh, you make them like I make them just in little short pieces. Oh, yeah. Glue them all together? Glue them all, yeah, all together. Yeah. At least. 
Yeah. Kind of a bus. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. No, I've made oh, 10 or 15 cables. Mm hmm. Is that after you retired? No. No, I, uh, when I retired, I was in my field. Mm -hmm. How long have you lived here now? Oh, see, about a year. Yeah. Oh, well, you didn't retire till just a little while ago? Oh, no. Yeah. Where were you, out at the ranch there? I uh, was in Vancouver. Oh, oh. We sold the ranch and then moved to Vancouver and then to that there. Do you like it up here better than Vancouver? Well, yes. Yeah. Because you can stop and talk to somebody up here. <laughs> There they look at you if you're a crook. Yeah. You t yeah, right. Now, down there where we lived, there was only one fellow that could stop and talk to you. Is that right? Yeah. Lived there for, for near two years. Yeah, yeah. What was his name, do you remember? No. He ju you just meet him on the street, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one time, in the relatives had bought a place at uh, Agassiz, near the experimental farm. And uh, what do you mean? I decided, well, I just moved in. I decided that we were to come for the evening. See if I come coming up the street and I said, God, I know that guy. I think he's closer, I think, it wasn't right. So I asked him anyway, I said, you know, any place around here, look for them, get a decent cup of coffee or something like mm -hmm. that. He took his head off and threw it down on the ground and said, by Jesus, he said, I finally found somebody that'll talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> he was from Prince Albert. Is that right? And you knew him? No, I didn't know him. Oh, oh, but he, oh, isn't that something? He threw it right on the ground. Yeah. So you got to be friends, did you? Yeah. Did you uh, meet him? Okay. I didn't meet him only once or twice after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's too bad when people haven't got the time of day to say hello mm -hmm. and talk, yeah. yeah. You've seen those pictures, I guess. Mm -hmm. I took a picture of this one. Someday I'll take a picture of your mother, okay? That one turned out pretty good, as you recall. You were holding it, the one with you on the horse? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what did you do with them three years? Oh, I sent them right there. Oh. They're over there in that yeah. envelope. So you be sure to send those to your sons. Yeah, I'll send them. Soon. Soon <laughs> take it. Be downtown. Get a stamp? Get some stamps. Oh. They'll probably have them around here if you ask them. At the desk, they probably have some stamps. They might. Yeah. But then he goes down. And, well, I can give him a letter and money to buy them. Sure. Sure. I've been having a lot of fun fly fishing this spring, Henry. Yeah. Catching fish, yeah. Then I went to the rodeo. You would have liked that, Henry. I'm sorry that I missed that. Yeah, you should have told somebody that you wanted to go see it. It was good. They had the bucking horses and they had the calf wrestling, calf roping, uh, the little kids, you know what they had? They called mutton busting. Mutton busting? They gave the little kids sheep to wrestle. You know, small yeah. sheep, not full grown rams or anything, small sheep. And the little kids had to go out and wrestle uh, the little sheep down to the ground. <laughs> called mutton busting. Cute. That was cute, yeah. Well, one time our neighbor uh, 
they had a bunch of sheep and this woman she uh, she was kind of a fussy thing mm -hmm. she wouldn't believe anybody because they pulled so much on her oh yeah so uh, she went down and she was coming the sheep uh -huh. and, uh, and one young fellow said opened the gate <laughs> Knocked her head over tea kettle. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Gee. And uh, the Nora Rabbit's father, he was working in the fine garden, showing manure or something. He stuck the fork in and he's leaning on it, you know, on top of it. Mm -hmm. The ram came up behind him and went in the behind and he went right over the fork. <laughs> That was the same time? The same day? No, no. Oh, another time? Yeah. They raised sheep too, did they? Rabbits? Yeah. They had a few sheep. Yeah. Mostly cattle, though, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they never had very many cattle there. 20, 30 head, but it's. What would they do with the sheep? Did they use the wool? I don't know. Oh. 